Well, hi, I'm Steve Krentz for Gibson's Learn and Master Guitar, and welcome to this month's video tip. Now, today, we're going to get back to the basics of practicing, how you should practice something to really master it. I'm going to give you four keys that are going to help you learn how to practice effectively. First one is, as you're coming through a passage, break it down into small pieces. Complex tasks can always be broken down into smaller, simpler pieces that can then be linked together. So if you're working on a song, let's say and it has maybe 16 measures in it, well, here's what not to do. Don't start at the top, play it all the way through, figure out all the fingerings, all that sort of stuff, and it maybe might take you 10 minutes to get to the end of it. And then you go right back up to the top and you do it again. Well, by then, all of these things that you have figured out, your brain hasn't had time to really really train your muscles how to play it effectively, so you end up having to solve it all again. The better way to do that is to take break that down into smaller pieces, maybe just do a measure or two at a time, work out those muscle movements, what notes you're going to play, how you're going to do them, all these tricky fingering issues, then go back and do that again, just those two bars. Then go back and do it again, really get that down, then move on to the next segment, play those two bars work out the issues with those two bars, then add those two together. Now you've got four bars and you keep working your way through the song that way. You will find you'll be able to, to conquer the song quicker, more effectively, by breaking it down into smaller pieces. Number two, second thing, small amounts of consistent focused practice time is better than large chunks of practice time. Well, Steve, what are you saying with that? You know, uh, if you practice a little bit in the morning, and then maybe a little bit more at night. This will help you remember what you're practicing. It helps you to really focus on the motions that are involved. A lot of times we will just, we'll have our guitar in our hands and we'll be watching TV or be on the computer and we'll just be noodling around on our guitar and we'll do that for a couple of hours and we'll call that practicing. Well, that's not practicing at all. You're not going to get very far down the road at all. What you need to do is focus, focus in, remove all the distractions and uh, really tackle what you need to tackle. It just only takes a few minutes of focus time is worth two hours of just messing around in your guitar. So really focus. Turn off all the distractions and focus down on what you need to do. Consistency is more important at the early stages than really quantity of practice time. Five minutes here, 10 minutes there, maybe 10 minutes more at night, working on the same thing. You do that for three or four days, you will get a long way down the road in technique uh, uh, development than if you just sat down and played for two hours on a Sunday afternoon and then didn't touch your guitar at all. All right, let's get to the third one. Work out finger issues, the finger choreography of the problem fingerings in a song before you work out the rhythm. So let's say I'm working on a song and then let's say I was working on a particular little lick and let's say, I don't know, if it was something like that was the lick I was trying to work out. Well, I need to first work out the fingering issues. There's a D, it's a second finger, E, the G, A, and I'm working all these finger issues out. I'm not worrying about the rhythm of it at all yet. I have to work out the finger issues first. Once I have those down, then I worry about, oh, well, how does the rhythm go? Oh, well, that's the rhythm of it. Work out the fingering first before you get to the rhythm. Play through the notes, get the finger motions down before working on the rhythm. All right, last thing to help you in your practice time. Fourth thing, work with a metronome. When it's time to get to the polish stage of your uh, working on a piece or a song or an exercise or something like that, then you start working with the metronome. Don't work with the metronome before you have your hand motions down securely. First thing, you look at a piece of music, let's say you're going to try and tackle a new exercise or something like that, work out the fingering issues first. Once you have those down pretty securely, then you start working with the metronome. So how would I do that? Well, I play it, let's say I've got my little lick there just like I was doing. Let's say that's my tempo that I can play it at without the metronome. So then I turn on my metronome and I try and find that rhythm about right there, I think. Maybe a little bit less. And now I try and play it exactly where I was at before. But this time I'm going to try and do it with the tempo of the metronome. 
I need to submit what I'm doing to the metronome. Two, ready, and one. Once I can play it several times correctly at that tempo, then I move it up. I play at it there. Three, four, one. And you slowly work yourself up until you're at a higher tempo. Four, one. And that's how you work with a metronome. You know, in college, uh, we studied Pepe Romero, great classical guitarist. One of the things that he would say is that as he's working through a piece, you get to a place where you can play that piece ten times correctly. Then you turn your metronome on, find whatever tempo, no matter how slow it is, that you could play it ten times correctly. Then you find that tempo, you click up your metronome one notch, and you play it ten more times correctly. Once you can play it ten times correctly at that new tempo, then you reach down and you move it up a notch. This was a man who knew about building speed and technique. It's not about, gosh, I hope I can do it faster. It's about slowly, methodically building things up in their muscle movements. Well, there you go. I hope these practice tips will help you get the most out of your practice time. You know, practicing is not about uh, punching a time clock. It's about getting things done. So here's a few quick last minute announcements for the month. We'll see you. Okay, here's some announcements for you for this month. Now remember, we've got live lesson tonight with our very special guest, Greg Voros, master guitar tech from legendary Groons Guitars here in Nashville. Greg does guitar setups and guitar work for the stars, and he's going to be here tonight with us for live lesson. That's Tuesday, January 10th, here at 7 p.m. Central Time. And uh, we're going to be talking about guitar care. If you have any questions about oh gosh, humidity and how it affects your guitar or strings and action, anything like that. Greg is one of the best ones on the planet to ask these questions about and he's a good friend. The ever handsome Greg Voros, he's going to be with us. So make plans to join us. We're going to be giving away several things uh, over the course of the night with uh, Greg Voros. We're going to be giving away a uh, Learn and Master Guitar Setup course, which uh, we'll have Greg autograph this as well. We did this with Greg. It's one of the best setup courses that I think is out there and he teaches how to do setups on four different types of guitars. So instead of uh, paying somebody to do uh, a guitar setup for you, you can just get this and uh, you could be doing it yourself. So save yourself a little bit of money. We'll be offering a big sale on this course uh, for this month for $39. So about the cost of what a regular guitar setup would be, you could learn how to do it yourself. Anyway, we'll be giving one of these away tonight at the live lesson, as well as a Damp It guitar humidifier, one of the best guitar humidifiers on the market, as well as we'll be giving away uh, some Professor Green's high-end guitar polish as well. So make plans to join us. That's 7 o'clock tonight. Now, the next live lesson after that is going to be on January 24th. Now, on in the Gibson Skills House, which is where we do all kinds of lessons and things like that, on Gibson.com, we've got new things coming up this week. We've got a new foundation lesson that I did about using a capo. Different aspects that you can use of capo, how to use it properly, and different things that you can do to uh, increase your playing by using a capo. We're also going to have song lessons by some of the other instructors. They're going to be teaching LaGrange by ZZ Top, as well as Blown in the Wind by Bob Dylan. All of the links to these things are in this newsletter. Now, before I let you go, we've got, remember the four things I gave you in the video tip. Break what you're working on down into smaller pieces. Number two, small amounts of consistent focus practice times are better than one big chunk of time. Third thing, work out, when you're working on something, work out the finger choreography first and then work on the rhythm. And the last thing, always work with a metronome later on in the process to polish what you're working on. Those are the four things. Have a great month. Remember, you only need to practice on days that you eat. So, we'll see you next time.